think going into this trip, I was afraid that when we finally got into the technical terrain, that some bike or that my bike would go down really hard. Remember to get your butts back. Get your butts back. So give each other some space, guys, okay? Blaine is a wilderness first responder medic. We're counting on him in case of serious injuries. Careful on that guy. Whoa, 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 whoa. As the trip was going on, it really changed, and there was this constant fear that somewhere around me, some bike was going to go down really hard, and we were going to have a really hurt rider. So when we were coming down Hurricane Pass, we're almost at camp, and finally starting to relax, and all of a sudden, Dan has this violent fall. He's down, his head cracks into the road. You can see he rips off part of his helmet. His pannier goes flying down. And John Dale is off his motorcycle, running to him in the ditch. I'm getting off my bike, grabbing the extra med kit, getting to Dan. So we give him a quick check. But it is really clear that some serious damage has been done to his side. And we touch the ribs, finally, and he just winces. You can see that he's in a ton of pain. But we're a long way from any hospital or 911, and there isn't any cell signal anyway. What we wouldn't find out for days is that Dan had broken and separated three ribs and partially collapsed a lung. And because of that event, it wasn't only that one of the things I was afraid of had come true. It made me more afraid for the next day when the stakes would be higher because we would be on similarly difficult road, but we would be hanging off the side of a cliff. So I was terrified that I would be in the wrong place when something happened. Fear is the great paralyzer. Fear is what causes us to stay in small stories, stories where we feel safe and in control. So what's been the biggest fear on the trip so far for you? For me, the moment that fear got in the most was doing Engineer's Pass, um, doing those switchbacks. And the day before, I was talking with Sam, realizing that in two days of this trip, I have doubled the total amount of motorcycle hours I've accumulated in the last four years of having a license. And so I just remember this moment of coming around a turn and experiencing the fear of heights, cliff, 800 cc's of power underneath me that I'm supposed to have some sort of control over and seeing the a bike down in front of me and just feeling like I am wildly unprepared for this. But the other part of the fear was the fear of failure, of being the person that couldn't do it, being the person that was the low man on the totem pole. And so to like see that and feel my own inexperience um, totally seized with fear. Mm -hmm seized with an inevitability of failure. For me, it was ridden a lot of the route before, ridden all of the route before, spent some of the most time on motorcycles. So there wasn't a fear of like, can I do this or not? It was, can the guy behind me do this or not? Yeah. Who happens to be your younger brother or your father or a friend? It really sucked to see you guys suffering and then bailing out or going off an edge. like. That's where my fear was. Sure. Um, and then, of course, all the responsibility that that bears. Yep. Of you were the one that chose this route. You were the one that brought them here. Have you noticed, as we're talking, how Blaine, medically, I won't be there, JD and Sam, I chose the wrong route. This is going to be my fault that, it, Luke, I'm going to be the low guy on the pole. Isn't it interesting for men how deeply connected fear is to failure? Yeah, I found on Engineer's Pass going up, especially with this group of caliber of men um, performing a very physical and technical task, um, fear felt like the voice telling me that I could not be a part of that. And therefore felt like failure, frustration, anger, and I almost like wanted to go faster or wanted to go like up, screw the switchbacks, I'm just gonna go up it um, to violently assault that voice. We often make decisions on the basis of what in the brain is called the limbic system. And it may sound a little technical, but there are two parts of that limbic system. The hippocampus, which basically sort of walks you through events of your life story-wise. 
here's what happened, and we resolved it, and it's all well. But you have another part of your brain, the limbic system, called the amygdala, and it's basically on edge every freaking second. Like it's going, snake, snake, tiger. And, and, but the hippocampus is going, oh, we've been down this path before. You're okay. You're going to make it, buddy. And the amygdala literally needs comfort. It needs the ability to rest and relax. And therefore, when Jesus says, fear not, I am with you. He's not saying, don't be afraid. He's simply saying, now will you receive my comfort, my care, my generosity, so that you can allow that tenseness, because that's what adrenaline, the catecholamines, uh, cortisol, is what it makes you tight. And certainly, my big accident of this trip came because I hit a rock and I tightened. So my fear afterwards has been every rock that would move my tire. And JD helped me so much by simply saying something simple, relax. Really what you were saying is, let Jesus care for your fear with kindness. And you'll then begin to relax and let the movement of the bike do what it's naturally built to do. We can't conquer fear, but we can receive kindness and generosity for fear. It's huge that the solution to fear is not perfection, but the, the solution to fear is mercy. Hmm. We all have a story with fear, what brings fear and how we handle it. Sometimes we hide, hang back and stay in a safe story. Sometimes we push ourselves too hard to try and overcome fear, which usually only makes it worse. Maybe it's heights, maybe it's losing someone, maybe it's getting really sick. Everyone has a story with fear. Fear actually opens us up to our need for someone greater than us to be there for us. Will we let him? <laughs> <laughs>